from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi everybody, welcome to the special edition of Cube Insights powered by ETR. This is Dave Vellante, and we've been running these breaking analysis segments, and it's timely because Oracle last night announced earnings ahead of expectations. They, they were expected to announce today, Friday, but they announced early, ostensibly because uh, co-CEO Mark Hurd is taking a leave of absence for medical reasons, so of course we, we wish him the best, hope everything's okay with him, but, uh, but, but it looks like they pre-announced or announced ahead of schedule uh, in order to get that out of the way and prepare for Oracle Open World. L Larry Ellison and Safra Katz are going to be filling in uh, during uh, Mark Hurd's absence. But So this is a breaking analysis on Oracle's earnings. Um, I, we call this, you know, can expect more of the same. So Alex, if you kind of bring up the financial overview of Oracle, we'll dig into it a little bit. So Oracle's a company with around $40 billion in annual revenue. It's growing at, you know, single digit growth, maybe, you know, 1% is the top line last quarter. They've got a large market cap, $187 billion, so they consistently trade in the four and a half to five X revenue range. Uh, and they've got an outstanding um, margin of, uh, uh, operating margin of 42%. It's very high, you know, they're a software company and a very, very profitable software company. Uh, that is a non-gap uh, margin. Their free cash flow is also very strong. They throw off about 14 to 12 to 14 billion dollars annually on a trailing 12 month basis in free cash flow. Uh, and the other thing about Oracle, I've made this point many, many times in theCUBE, is Oracle spends money on R&D. They spend about 15% of revenue on, on, on R&D. Um, they've got a lot of cash. They got you know, over 35, 36 billion dollars in cash and short-term investments. Uh, but they, of course, also have uh, uh, some long-term debt, over 50, well over 50 billion dollars in long-term debt. Now, that doesn't bother me. Some people point to that as a concern, but if you look at Oracle's EBIT, it's many, many times greater than its interest payments. I mean, I think, you know, 3X is kind of the benchmark there, and Oracle, you know, is well, well over that, you know, six, seven X uh, 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 EBIT uh, relative to its interest payments. So that's really not a concern of, of mine. Um, but the other thing is interest on the debt is oftentimes it's tax deductible. And so it, it can be a good source of capital, it's cheap, cheap debt, and of course Oracle's got to compete with some of the cloud suppliers building out more data centers. They just had an announcement in that, in that regard, and so it needs capital, even though it, you know, it can't spend nearly as much as Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, not even close. It would take Oracle years and years and years to spend what, what Google does in four months. But, uh, but nonetheless, they need cash to, to compete in their business. Oracle's got a shifting business mix from kind of lower margin hardware, you know, the remnants of, of the Sun business, and, and really shifting to higher margin cloud services and support Oracle has really gone all in on, on cloud. Again, even though it's really, it's cloud is not competitive with the hyperscalers, but it's sort of the Oracle cloud, the red stack cloud. Um, but in that, that business is growing. It's around, growing at around 4% uh, from a constant currency standpoint. Uh, this past quarter, it, it's shifting, Oracle's shifting toward an annual recurring revenue model, and its license business is declining. Um, and so uh, you saw that last quarter declined around 6%. And you're seeing a, a major shift from on-prem to cloud uh, with Oracle. ERP, cloud ERP is where the action is for Oracle and I'll show you some data on that from, from ETR. Um, it's really Fusion, uh, Fusion ERP and NetSuite. Uh, they're growing at, you know, combined well over 30% uh, last quarter. Uh, and as I say, they get, the news here is Mark Hurd is going on a leave of absence. We got Oracle Open World coming up next week. Uh, and you know, they're going to be talking about what we call Cloud 2.0. Larry Ellison, I'm sure, is going to be talking about autonomous database. There's going to be, I'm sure, some Exadata announcements, and I'll talk a little bit more about why that's important. Um, now, I want to uh, share with you uh, some spending intentions from ETR. We've been, uh, last couple of months, We've been sharing uh, enterprise technology research data. We've partnered with them uh, to do these breaking analysis and these CUBE insights. ETR has a panel of about 4,500 CIOs, IT practitioners, and they go out quarterly and do spending intention surveys. And I'm showing you data now from the July 2019 survey focused on spending intention, intentions for the second half of 2019. You can see the number of survey uh, respondents was 1,068 out of that 4,500 panel. 
What this slide shows uh, is if you look in the left-hand side, you can see the, the, the products or the categories of spend. So there's, on the, uh, reading top to bottom, Fusion, Oracle Fusion, NetSuite, Oracle overall, and then Oracle on-prem. So these are the categories, some of the categories that ETR captures. And what we're showing here is, is the calculation of net score, and I'll share with you how net score is, is calculated. So if you look on the left-hand side, you'll see the dark red. That is we're leaving the platform. The light red is we're going to spend less. The gray is spending is flat. The dark green is we're going to spend more, and the lime green is we're adding the platform. So if you take the green minus the red, you get net score. So let's look down, as I said, uh, Fusion and NetSuite are where the action is for Oracle. You see the net score here is 14% for Fusion, 12% for um, NetSuite, Oracle itself is uh, 7%, and Oracle on-prem is minus four. These are not great scores. Uh, we shared with you uh, just recently uh, Snowflake and its net score. Snowflake's net score is you know, 81%. Uh, we shared with you some data around UiPath. That's also you know, 80% plus net score. These are much smaller companies, but they're growing very, very fast. And I'll share some other uh, scores from Oracle competitors in just a moment. I also want to point out the shared accounts. What the shared accounts are is the number of mentions that these platforms received in, within that N of 1068. So you can see the Fusion and NetSuite, you know, relatively small at 80 and 87, but still statistically significant. Oracle itself, very, very large, you know, uh, huge install base, 1329, and then Oracle on-prem, you know, 282. So, I mean, there you have it. I mean, this is not barn burning. This, to me, underscores that Oracle is losing share, and I'll, and I'll show you that in context in this next slide. So, again, same kind of format with uh, the, the net score calculation, but what I've done is compared Oracle to ServiceNow, Workday, Salesforce, and SAP. Now look at ServiceNow. Uh, ServiceNow is a net score of 53% with a number of shared accounts of 358. So very large sample inside of that 1068. I'll show you some time series in a moment. ServiceNow, obviously very strong company. Uh, they get a valuation now that's up actually higher than Workday, uh, believe it or not. Um, we've talked a lot about the, the CEO transition and on and on and on, and we, we've covered uh, the ServiceNow shows for many years, but so very strong, very strong install base, growing their TAM into, into new markets, and so you can see there, the Workday as well, extremely strong. Now, Oracle will often you know, give examples of how it's beating Workday. I think in the earnings call yesterday, uh, uh, Ellison talked about how they beat you know, Workday at McDonald's. You know, when you peel the onion on those things, oftentimes it's one division, or, but who knows? Uh, you know, it's, it's very possible that, that you know, Oracle swept the floor of Workday. But, but regardless, Workday is growing much, much faster than Oracle. It's taking share from Oracle, despite you know, the examples that Oracle gives. Um, Salesforce as well, same with Salesforce. It's growing much, much faster than Oracle. If you look at ServiceNow, Workday, and Salesforce, even SAP, look at SAP's net score at 31% which frankly, we consider neutral. I mean, it's not like SAP's you know, burning the barn either, but much, much stronger than Oracle's 7% net score. So again, I say it's sort of more of the same. Oracle, is, its earnings are kind of meh. I mean, it throws off great cash flow. It's got great earnings, but there's no growth there. Uh, and and uh, as a result, you know, people are down on the stock a little bit today, and that combined with the herd news, and the stock should be down based on, on the, the earnings announcements. So a little bit of a disappointment. Or of course, Oracle focuses on, on the profit, and today people are rewarding growth. That may, may change, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk more about that in a moment. But before I do that, I want to show you a time series. So this is those same competitors, ServiceNow, Workday, Salesforce, SAP, and Oracle, all the way back to January 2017, the January 2017 survey. So you can see that ETR takes these surveys in January, April, July, and, and October. Uh, they're just now running the, the October survey, so we'll have some you know, up-to-date results there. But you can see the net score is what I just showed you, 53%, 52%, 44% for those leaders, those growth leaders, very, very strong. These are the share gainers. SAP holding at 31%, and you can see Oracle down in the single digits. Um, each of these companies is actually kind of holding serve, if you will, but again, ServiceNow, Workday, Salesforce, growing much, much faster than the market 
growing much, much faster than, than Oracle. So let me summarize. Uh, so again, Mark Hurd leaving uh, a leave of absence for medical reasons. Ellison, Larry Ellison, and Safra Katz are filling in for Hurd. I'm sure you're going to hear some more talk about that at Oracle Open World this week. Um, Oracle's losing share in the enterprise software space. Uh, despite what they tell you, um, that's a fact. They are a company around, around cash flow, EPS, and stock buybacks. That's how they're keeping the stock up. It's an effective technique. Everybody does it. Oracle makes tuck-in acquisitions here and there. Uh, been very aggressive over the years, and it's going hard after cloud. It's an Oracle cloud. It's, it's, it really is around their database, which the Oracle remains the leader for mission critical database. Oracle has the best database for mission critical, but it's under attack in all those non-mission critical areas. With, whether it's Mongo, we showed you the Snowflake data the other day. I mean, there's just dozens and dozens of database competitors that are going after Oracle at, uh, in the periphery, but they remain the core leader in mission critical database. Um, fighting it out with, uh, with, with Microsoft and, and, and IBM and, and others, but Oracle is by, you know, far and away the leader there. Exadata is the key uh, to Oracle's lock spec, in our opinion, because Oracle's got to fight for, you know, if it's straight database, they've got to fight all these other database competitors. Once a, once a customer decides on Exadata, Oracle's got them. And so that's why Oracle's putting so much effort into Exadata. I'm sure at Oracle Open World this week, you're going to hear a lot about Exadata and Autonomous and all kinds of stuff that they're doing in Exadata and try to make it a, uh, an increasingly competitive platform. Um, so Oracle also has a very strong apps business and that's really the linchpin to its, its cloud. Its cloud, in, in our view, is not even closely competitive with, with the cloud infrastructure at Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. And those companies spend much, much more on CapEx they have you know, a much greater infrastructure as a service. Microsoft, in Microsoft's case, got a very strong uh, software uh, estate and applications business. Google, massive scale. So from a, just a cloud infrastructure standpoint, you know, really Oracle is, is playing catch up uh, just like IBM is and, and probably will never catch up. Um, Oracle overall, again, it's sort of a story of meh, more of the same. Until the market sentiment shifts toward cash flow and earnings, its stock is, in my view, is going to trade inside a range. I'm not a stock picker, I don't make stock recommendations, but I'm you know, kind of a fundamental analysis and observer. You know, I just don't see that, that stock breaking out. There's really no growth story there and the market's rewarding growth. Now, if and when the market does turn down, let's say there's a recession, people will reward companies like Oracle. You have the cash who can you know, do the buybacks or companies that pay dividends. And so, Oracle, holding serve, making a lot of right moves. You know, Larry Ellison is you know, leading the ship, obviously a, a very smart person, don't bet against that individual. Fact is they're losing share, but at the same time, they're running a playbook that's working. Uh, and it's working from the standpoint of EPS and cash flow, and I think that story is going to continue. So there you have it, that's our analysis. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time. This is Dave Vellante with Cube Insights, powered by ETR.